So once you have things patched, the next thing that you're going to want to do is actually uh, mix them. So uh, to go into mixing any one of the channels, all you would do is select the channel, and you hit the channel select button um, at the top of the fader row. And if you hit that and follow along, you will see the channel display screen. So here you can see on my screen, I have a preamp set up. And what this does is remotely controls the preamp. So in this case, I would be controlling the preamp that is on the stage remotely. I can adjust the gain by uh, turning the little red knob in the physical hardware section in 1 dB increments. So I can adjust uh, 1 dB more, 1 dB less uh, very, very easily. If the microphone that I'm using requires phantom power, I have a 48 volt phantom power, and then I also have pads. So I can plug line level sources in without needing a DI box uh, just by going into the pad section. Next up would be uh, gates or dynamics. So, for example, if you had an acoustic kit um, and you wanted to add a gate to it, so um, you know you really get a clean snare sound that you're dealing with, and you don't get the other mics that are on the drum kit, um, what you would do is hit the display uh, button for the gate. So, if you hit that. That's the way it operates. And one thing about the navigation of the console that I should point out from the beginning is that all of these display buttons, that's how you access those parameters uh, quickly and directly. And we've set this up. So you simply tap on those display areas. If I want to get the scene memory, I hit scene memory. If I want to hit the uh, memory recorder, I do that. Go back to the gate. I hit gate, and then very quickly I can access it. So whichever uh, display button is, is lit red, that is the currently displayed screen. That's how you know that that's the one that you're on. And at any time, if you want to go back to your home uh, channel, you simply hit um, the, the uh, button again, or you can hit the channel edit uh, channel display and bring that one up. So your channel display buttons very quickly get you into that particular uh, screen edit, and they are all lit green around the console if that's a main screen that you can get into. So again, your gate and your compressors are built in here. And one thing that I've set up for you as a, uh, uh, an example here uh, to show you the compressor on the, um, on the base, for example. And let's uh, just find the base, which is here. We'll select that. And you can see that we've turned the uh, compressor on. And let's play this here. Are you all familiar with the concept of a key in for your, for your compressor? A lot of times people, for example, uh, want to be able to, uh, they're trying to eliminate the fight that happens between your kick drum and your bass guitar, for example. And one of the things that you can do is use a key in uh, on your compressor so that every time the kick hits, it pulls down the volume of the bass so that the kick has room to exist in the actual mix. So in order to do that, um, if you guys want to follow along, you can pick any channel here. And uh, what you would do is hit the compressor display button, just down at the uh, bottom left-hand side of the channel edit section. And that will pull up the compressor for you. And I'm just going to uh, bring up a little bit of audio here so you can hear it. And if you turn the compressor on, that will engage it, so you'll be able to see it. And what I'm going to do is go in and choose the key in source. Now, normally, if you don't want another channel to affect, be the source for that key, you would just hit self. So now all I'm doing is the very traditional adding of a compressor against that instrument. So if that was, you know, it could be a vocal, whatever I want. And you can notice the gain reduction that's happening here sort of follows the sound of the bass drum. Now, if I go in and I change the key source, let's change this to the kick. Now, watch how the, ga the gain reduction exactly matches the way the kick is happening. OK? So you can use this to be able to, in this case, give the bass room to breathe against the kick drum. Now, if we were using the V-Drums kit that's here as a stereo kit, we would have the entire frequency range of that drum kit uh, at our disposal. Um, and it would be very hard to get just the kick, typically, to affect the, um, uh, the bass as the key in. So what we have is a key in filter. And we could turn this on. And we would be able to use the uh, filter here to isolate just the low frequencies. Um, now, of course, we are just using a straight kick here, but I could go in and just simply choose the low end of the frequency. And if that was the full drum kit frequency, you can see that this notch that is left black 
it would just pull the low frequencies and use a stereo source, just get the low frequencies to affect the compressor for the key in. So just a, a, a nice DSP feature that's built in here and something that can help you improve your mix uh, pretty, pretty quickly as well. And again, one of the arts of mixing is um, giving each instrument its own room to breathe. If we move over to the EQ uh, very, very quickly, and we're going to give you time to actually sit and listen to each of these. The EQ section is here. You have a four band, uh, fully parametric. I'm going to go into the EQ display here really quickly. And if you hit that button, it will pull up a bigger image of the EQ. And one of the great features that we have here is the ability to choose um, all different types of EQ on the low and the low mid, high mid, high mid and high frequencies. So you can see here that if I wanted to put a shelving EQ on the low, I could. There's uh, different um, uh, dB slopes for the filters as well that you could apply. Bandpass and notch are also available. So I'm just going to leave this in peaking. But one of the unique features that's in the M480 is the ability uh, to actually add a notch or a bandpass filter in the low mid and the high mid. So if you had a couple of problem frequencies in your mix that you wanted to knock out, and typically you would have used a 31 band graphic, to pull that out, you can actually uh, just very quickly choose the problem frequency here. And again, I can use my knobs uh, here very quickly and adjust the Q uh, to get how wide I want. And I can notch out a very specific frequency just by using the four band EQ that's built in uh, to the console without having to use a 31 band uh, that's built in there. We also have a high pass filter uh, built in. And if I pull it up on um, my microphone, uh, for example, um, Let's pull up the display here, and I adjust the frequency. You can see that the low end of my voice really starts to uh, be removed. And then as I remove this, you can hear the lower uh, parts of my voice uh, sort of come back in. So this is a great way to remove the thud uh, from microphones um, that are in there is by placing the high-pass filter on, and it'll help you get some of those plosives and, and the, the low thuds that you get in your, in your microphones there. Um, last feature to show you in the channel edit um, area is the delay. So we have a delay on every single one of the 48 inputs. And how you can use that, uh, most common application is to be able to delay the audio that's coming back from your video playback sources. Have you guys ever played video in your facility and the words aren't quite matching up with the video? Typically the, the, the audio is before the video. That happens because typically Video introduces more delay by the time it goes through scalers, switchers, and projectors uh, to get to the actual screen. So what we can do is add delay here and match up our audio from our video so it matches exactly with what the video is. You can also use it to do time alignment of drum microphones if you have an acoustic kit and uh, some other really sophisticated mixing things like that. We also have a safe button, so when I recall um, scenes, that channel will not be affected by the um, recall that's there. So that's the basics of what you would do to affect the sound on any one uh, particular channel. Very, very easy.